Welcome to Michael's Mailbox. Hey everyone, it's Joe and Michael from Bullion Now, bullionnow.com.au, selling you the best bullion bars and coins shipped to you worldwide from Melbourne in Australia. It's another mailbox time. It is. Why? Why? Because we can. Yeah. Yeah, there's and lots we... and lots of queries and sometimes it's quicker just to hit them with a video rather than individually cutting and pasting to everyone's response. So cool. that's what we're going to do. And there's lots of fun comments this time around. There is. Right. Um, we're going to look at the soaring a 1,000 1, ounce silver bar in half. What do you mean? Well, uh, as a lot of people would have seen, um, over the weekend we released a video where we actually got a Perth Mint 1,000 um, ounce silver bar and we hacked it apart. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, you attempted to cut it in half quickly. I did. And then uh, there was a, a few hiccups, but... Uh, it was. And look, I'm the first to acknowledge there would have been far quicker and easier ways, but yeah. we were going uh, dramatic. I, I hesitate to say clickbaity, but we were going for the dramatic, yeah. and we thought that would be dramatic. Um, unfortunately, it was it didn't work out as planned, but by the time you're halfway through it, you're not going to back out at that point. So yeah, and you know, we, we put it on a thousand times speed, and... We did. And we got it in the end. Yeah, we did. Like, I mean, we... We cut it in half. Yeah. It just uh, made all the tradesmen out there look really good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, go through some of those comments, shall we? All righty. So starting from the top, Will Willie Bob. As a carpenter, I love seeing this not working <laughs> as easy as you could hope. Clients have a plan for the job, but no idea of the difficulty. Good work, boys. Yeah, look, like I said, we make you guys look really good. Um, but uh, I have to admit, I didn't think it was going to be as difficult as it was. Um, Dude, I was so ready for the chainsaw action. <laughs> yeah, uh, I wasn't going to wreck my chainsaw. Uh, never seen someone cut a $34,000 bar in half before. Entertaining, and it did prove that it's 4 nines pure silver. You should get a 1,000 likes for the video, hopefully. We'll see what it is. Um, still not as tough to cut into as my mum's meatloaf. That was one of my favourite comments. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Reminds me of jewellery school and uni, sharing a bar with a classmate. Very nostalgic. Um... This has to be one of the most Australian things ever. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, never seen a bar that... So a lot of them seem to be saying, you know, haven't seen that before. Um, so that's one of the reasons we did it, because we actually couldn't find it on YouTube anywhere, although I dare say there'd be one hidden somewhere in the in the back reaches of YouTube. But not like how we did no, it. No, not how like <laughs> we did it. Yeah. Um, so... Um, there's a bit of response about uh, if Perth Mint will be less than pleased about it, and uh, I can't see Perth Mint being really impressed with us doing it, if I'm completely honest. But at the end of the day, it's an industrial bar. It's designed... Okay, we do sell them for investment, um, but they're really designed for melting down and processing into other things. Mm. So I don't think they'll get that stressed about it. I just don't think they'll particularly be happy that we've done it. That's no, okay. Um... I like this because it shows, at the end of the day, metal is metal. Um, and that's something we didn't emphasise very much. Um, where's Maya? I like this because it shows, at the end of the day, metal is metal. And even if it's cut in half, it's still 500 ounces of silver. He's exactly right. And that's something we didn't talk about, is one of the great things about your precious metals, your gold, your silver, your platinum, to a large degree, it doesn't matter what we do with them. They're still worth that, that amount of weight in that precious metal. So you can cut them in half, you could melt them down, you can graffiti them, you could take to them with an axe, you can do whatever you like, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, metal's metal um, in this case. So Now that is the meaning of a scratch and dead. <laughs> yes. Um, ah, yeah, a couple of comments about Bunnings. Look, I have to admit um, that I set the, the Bunnings boys up. Don't take it out on Bunnings. Um, I did go in there. The original intention was to cut the box and bar at the same time. So I went in there and said, look, I need a blade that's going to cut wood and metal. So the fact that they gave me a coarse tooth blade was not actually their fault. They gave me the right thing. Um, it's just that uh, as soon as we started cutting, cutting into the, the wooden box, it fell apart. So, um, and we couldn't control the bar. I was hoping that the bar would stay contained within the box, but it started walking its way in and out of the box. So... Just for safety reasons, we had to ditch it and then go straight to just cutting the bar, in which case the blade was completely wrong. So my fault, that one. Don't blame Bunnings' advice for, for that one. Um, I set them up. Uh, there's a lot of people that think we're nuts. Um, so That's completely true. 
And yes. I, I have a feeling that we, we've been talking about some more videos that we could do. Uh, we had a little chat this morning. <laughs> if you think we're nuts now, yes, yeah, um, boy. <laughs> if, if if this stuff pans out, um, yeah, this this is nothing. Yeah, so stand by on that one. A lot of people wanted to know how much uh, we lost in the filings. Um, the bag is actually it's living just here. There's a sprinkling of it in the office just to show it off. But that's the bag. It weighed about three, uh, just over 300 grams. So we lost about 10 ounces in the cup. Um, we had a drop sheet down, so there's no use going around the back streets of Melbourne with a metal detector, which I saw a few people were keen on doing. Yeah. Um, you're going to pick up a lot of things that aren't silver. Um, but yeah, so about 10 ounces is what we lost in that one. And it was a fairly coarse agricultural cut, so you could do it in a lot less. So we've had a lot of comments to say, can I have that? Or <laughs> can you sell that? Can you? Are we going to do something with that, with that stuff over there? We will do something with it. I actually don't know what it is yet. I'm a little reluctant to um, to sell it as as dust or as filings or any of those things because it starts incurring uh, the interest of the ATO with GST. Yeah. So it just it's not that it's illegal or anything along those sort of lines. It just it just starts raising questions, and to yeah. be honest, I don't want to have to answer those sorts of questions. Could we uh, get it melted down? and turned into something or somethings. Yeah, and that makes it a lot cleaner, which is probably what we'll do. So okay. we might have a yarn to someone like Smithy's Bullion and, and see if we can come up with something creative to get ah, them cast into. But, okay, uh, cool. Yeah, that's a discussion for another day. All right. Um, sometimes it's good to do a bit of quality control for the big mint productions. That was certainly quality control on theirs. Um, so there's a lot of that sort of stuff. It seems to be a few comments about um, can we do a Chinese bar. Uh, I don't try and get into the politics of this sort of stuff, um, but I will admit to the fact that we are currently in negotiation over a 1,000-ounce Chinese bar, and the intent is actually to cut it in half um, and have a look what's inside. Yeah. So why not? What the heck? Why not? The question is, what do we cut it with this time? Well, yeah. Let's let's find. If there, if you guys have any suggestions of what we should cut it with, absolutely. That's a bit Throw more in. bit more dramatic, and that's actually going to work, and it's quick and whatnot. Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Definitely, um, it's good to see we get an international flavour. So from Brand, uh, this retired Yank Army dude loves your videos. Keep up the work. Um, one day I need to order from you if you ship to the states. Absolutely, we ship to the states. But it's really good to see that uh, we're getting the international flavour there. It's not just the Australians that think we're mad. Uh, should have dripped some oil on it. Absolutely, we should have. And if I'd realised what exactly was going to go down, we would have had a little bit of um, a little bit of oil on there. Uh, so the dust. Yeah, it seems to be along the same sort of lines. Uh, and I... <laughs> the progressive gold bug. I do love your comment. It was the first, I've seen a couple of them come through since, but I love the fact that uh, he was the first one to put up there. Oh, now Michael wears gloves. Fair. Co I actually really, really like that comment. So, progressive gold bug. If you can contact us and prove who you are, and I'm not actually sure logistically how we do that, but I reckon we call that the uh, comment of the week, and we'll give you a silver coin for it. Nice. A one ounce silver coin. So, wow. If you can contact us and prove who you are, um, you're gonna have to pay postage. But uh, I'll give you a free silver one ounce coin. We're going to have about 100 <laughs> uh, people claiming, no, I am progressive. No, I am progressive. Yeah, I'm, I might have opened a can of worms there. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure how we're going to do yeah. it. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, the Angle Grinder one and the Bandsaw um, are both very valid comments about it would have been better to cut it with that. You're absolutely right. The reason we didn't was it, we didn't think it would be quite so dramatic. Um, in hindsight, I think it might have been. The, the other problem I have with the angle grinder is controlling the the, uh, the metal going everywhere. So um, that was the reason we, we ruled out the angle grinder. But yeah, I'll absolutely admit right from the start, there would have been more intelligent ways to cut the bar in half. Um, let's go through maybe three more. Three more and we'll, uh, we'll tie it up there. I was going to think. I was going to think. Going to think? I was thinking that uh, maybe we'd just maybe move on to some... Um, some of the other videos, because oh, I think yeah, we've sure. covered yeah, okay. most of the comments yeah, um, on there. So if I bring up this other thing. All right. Um, uh, okay, so there's a bit of comments on this week's um, release and specials. 
just want to touch on that. Um, I do apologise that we've slewed it out for another week. Mm. Um, we were meant to release today, Monday the 3rd. Um, it won't come out until uh, Monday the 10th. Um, and that was actually outside of our control. It was... Uh, Pe- people keep asking what it is, but we can't say what I, it is. I actually... Is. I'm not allowed to say. It's not even that I don't want to. I'm not actually allowed to say what it is. Yeah. Um, we're under a uh, an embargo, so can't do it. But also on that video, stay tuned on May the 4th because we are doing a Star Wars... Oh, I wasn't going to say that, was I? <laughs> well, I think most people are going to get it anyway. Uh, the I May think, the 4th reference. I think the, the cat was well out of the bag, so... Yeah. Um, even on here, there's a lot of, um, most of the comments on here are actually from um, either the, the, both the releases over the weekend. So the few on the fake um, bars, I encourage you to, if you haven't already seen the fake versus uh, real video, or is it real versus fake, whichever way around it goes. Fake versus real Perth Mint bars. Yes. Yeah. I strongly suggest if you're a stacker that you, um, you view it um, purely because it's great to have that uh, that sort of knowledge um, or exposure without getting suckered by it yourself. We actually have um, a couple of fake videos, so not the one that's had like half a million views, but there's a few others. So I'll put a link to those yeah. uh, as well. Particularly the silver coin ones, they're pretty cool. Yeah, the silver coin one's good. Um, the, the reason I like the bar one over the coin one is the, the coins are actually illegal. So yes. you, they're harder to come by. Right. Um, because it's illegal to to counterfeit any country's money effectively. I, I don't think there's any country that allows it. Um, so, you know, you see far less of that sort of stuff. And it's it's really not worth counterfeiting a one-ounce silver coin unless it's a special coin. So, you know, you don't tend to see a lot of that, but you certainly do um, see a lot of bars that have been counterfeited. So it's a great idea just to view it. A um, couple of comments on the Wombats. Really sorry, they sold out incredibly quickly. Um, so a couple of comments on Smithies. Grab hold of some of that Smithy stuff. It's great just to add flavour to your stack. Um, so a bit of uh, bit of uh, discussion about whether um, whether the stars were actually a star because of the points and that sort of stuff. <laughs> well above my pay grade, that one. Um, again, comments about wearing a glove to pick up poured silver. Oh, I hate this glove toing and froing. Um, I, I'm of a, I'm a tactile person. I don't like wearing gloves no matter what I'm handling, unless I'm handling coins because I'm a coin guy um, and I like to keep the fingerprints off them. If they're bars, as far as I'm concerned, they're industrial. Um, if they're poured silver, I'm kind of on the fence on that one, but particularly with these... They're not, we own them, yeah. but they're not actually ours longer term. Our intent is for someone to sell them. And so I don't want them to have to put up with my fingerprints all over the precious item they've just bought. So yeah, that's not. the main reason we um, we wear gloves with that sort of stuff. We did have a comment about uh, wearing, not wearing a glove when holding a capsuled coin. Mm, um, look, not, yeah. the... The capsule's protecting the coin, so I'm not worried about it. Um, there was a comment, I think I saw a comment about how the oils would react with the, the plastic and break down over time, uh, particularly with exposure to UV. Yeah. Um, look, plastics break down under UV anyway, unless they're very special plastics. Yes, it might accelerate it slightly, but to be honest, most people would store their capsules in a darkened place, whether that's inside, in a cupboard, or in a vault. So I think... I think it's a something nothing. I don't know. Maybe the chemists out there will get involved with us and um, and tell me off for that one. But I don't think it's an issue. Um, as long as you're not putting the capsuled coin on a scratchy surface or anything like that. Yeah. I'm. 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 I'm I wouldn't do that. You know. But um, personally, holding a capsule in your bare hands, I'm. I'm cool yeah. with that. It depends how far we want to take this. Yeah. Um, look, I think that's about it. Most of the others we've covered, if I'm completely honest. Cool. Um, so if we haven't got to one of yours and we haven't covered the topic that you wanted us to cover, cover, then just make a note down below and we'll try and hit it um, with a response of some kind. Then we'll be doing a response to this response. Yeah, that's <laughs> It'll right. It'll be a, mailbo- a mailbox to this mailbox. Um, cool. All right. Well, um, that's another Michael's Mailbox. That's it. And uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. There's lots of videos coming up this week, including the May the 4th. 
Yep. Uh, be with you video and of course all the regular stuff. And as always, that's it from me. And from me too. We'll see you soon. See ya.